Okay, so yesterday I put a video up about doing a, what I call the process version swap inside a Lightroom to get contrast under control. And one of my wonderful subscribers actually asked me a question. Why don't I use the actual tone curve to try and correct or well, control the contrast? Well, it's quite simple really because it's very difficult to actually control the tone curve inside a Lightroom because it's a little bit small and really and truly controlling contrast with a tone curve is not really all that easy because yes you can increase contrast with it very easily but you can't decrease it very easily. Let me just explain. Here we've got a picture of Aries, a little tawny owl, isn't he lovely? Nice and sharp, shot with a D4 and a 500mm F4, uh, shot wide open, hence we've got out of focus parts of the owl. And this isn't mush applied in Photoshop because this is, after all, a raw file straight out of the back of the camera. So it's actually shot through a little tiny gap in a gauze bush. But uh, anyway, I digress. If we just have a look at this image and look at the histogram, you can see we've got shadow clipping and the indicator is blue. So that means we've got shadow clipping in the blue channel. We can actually go and lift the actual black point. But if we lift the black point inside the RGB tone curve, then we'll get too much shadow lift. So what we need to do is bring that back down to uh, its default. So we've got our shadow clipping back. And instead of being on the RGB channel, we go to the isolated blue channel. And then we can just lift that ever so slightly. And yeah, we'll get rid of the black clipping. But as you'll notice, the histogram is still way over to the left. Yeah, now we can, of course, if um, I go back to the composite RGB, we can, of course, lift up the darker areas of the image. But of course, that puts this parabolic curve in. And then we, we, what we'd have to do to protect our highlights is to try and bring this back in a little bit. And yeah, we've dropped the contrast and we've moved the histogram slightly over to the right. But as you can see, we've already taken nearly 30 seconds to do this and it, it's not a very good result but yes we have actually reduced the overall contrast in the image but if i now reset all that and what i'm going to do is just try and get you to understand the difference between contrast and clarity inside a lightroom and to do that i need to go and show you a couple of rather leery garish uh, black and white grad images and we'll start off with this one in point of fact before we go here we'll actually go back to this image and I want to ask you a question where is 99.99 percent of the detail in this image is it in shadows is it in highlights or is it in midtones well if you said midtones you've got it right and so what we need to do is we need to understand the difference between contrast and clarity because contrast affects shadows and highlights clarity affects midtones so now we will scoot off over to this rather garish first image and before we even discuss the image let's go and discuss the histogram now we're here in Lightroom and if I put my mouse into the histogram you'll see this bottom left hand end has gone slightly lighter gray those are our shadows those are our dark areas in other words our darks to dark midtones that big chunk there are our midtones and if we move to the right there are our upper midtones and lower highlights so we expect detail in there detail in there detail in there not much detail there and not much in the way of detail here so these areas here and here need to be kept under control and if we actually increase 
contrast you can see that what we've done is we've actually reduced the peaks in this area here and this area here in the upper end of it if I go back and remove that contrast here we've got our dark area and this is about RGB 4 actually and if I just very carefully put my cursor over it you can see that don't forget in the histogram the actual values you can see there for RGB aren't normal RGB values they are lab values so it's basically luminosity so if it was pure black it would be zero as you can see it's 0.5 and that's a percentage value 100 percent is pure white zero percent is pure black so you can see we've got no pure black in there and if we come over to the center we've got sort of 99.6 90 to 9.7 yeah about 99.6 99.7 is the brightest area of luminance in this image so our midtones are stretching from here in our very darkest midtones to about here in our very very lightest or brightest midtones so if i actually increase contrast all i'm actually doing is i'm moving black and white closer together at the expense of my midtones i'm actually crushing my midtones they don't expand as much from this center area so what that in essence means is this on a real image by increasing contrast i'm actually crushing my midtones and my midtones actually carry virtually all my detail and what do people want to see in our images they want to see the detail so contrast is a really really bad thing or i should say excessive contrast is a really bad thing if i move over to uh, this second image here and i'll take this to a fill view and uh, we just scoot it to about there we've got no adjustments on this and this is actually a radial three or four rgb to 252 253 rgb white so we're going from near black all the way around through to near white and we've got a pure white background if i increase the contrast in this now we start to lose differentiation between this area here and the pure white and we also see that our lower midtones into our lighter shadow areas have got choked we can't see any definition in them if we remove all the contrast now i can see right into there and basically the whole thing looks nearly three-dimensional now obviously removing all contrast from an image is not a good idea but i'm actually going to leave that contrast setting there for a moment and then what i'm going to do is adjust the clarity slider and what I want you to do is check out what happens to the histogram if I push clarity all the way up now you can see I've actually built more tonality but it's very constricted if I take this linear or what purports to be a linear tone curve and I switch it out to my process version swap tone curve now you can see we bulk up a little bit more clarity is a funny old thing if i take some of it out you can see how it's we're getting more vertical components in our mid-tone areas so as i say clarity is a strange old thing because it's useful but you mustn't overdo it if i actually bring some contrast back into the image and then put some contrast some clarity in now we can see we're generating a little bit more bulk in the image we're keeping a nice balance between this black to near white radial graduation and we're still keeping plenty of separation between these can i say lower highlight details and the actual pure white of the background so how does this impinge on our images for real because let's face it none of this is actually of any use to us in reality other than actually teaching us the difference between clarity and contrast so if i switch back to little aries 
he's a lovely boy, isn't he? Oh, look at him, that lovely eye. Only thing is, you can't see what's going on in that eye. Yes, we are back to our imported settings, so we've got this Lightroom background crazy contrast increasing adjustment. As I said in yesterday's video, I don't understand why it's there, and I just wish it wasn't, because it would make everybody's life so much easier. So we've got some black clipping in the blue channel, and you can see where our histogram distribution is. The only thing is, we we can't expose any further to the right because the histogram actually goes all the way up to here. And the very, very end of it, we couldn't even expose or overexpose this image, even another third of a stop. Otherwise, this specular highlight here would clip. Now, where is that specular highlight? No prizes for guessing. It's right there in the middle of the eye. So basically, I couldn't pump any more exposure into this image to actually get more detail out of the eye. That's what you'd think. Actually, the exposure has caught more detail in that eye than is apparent here in Lightroom because Lightroom's put this excessive contrast adjustment in the background and applied it to the image. So we'll go ahead again and do a straightforward process version swap and uh, we will basically come down to Adobe Standard and we'll switch that out to camera neutral. Watch the image, watch the histogram. Straight away, I've got rid of my black clipping and the histogram has moved to the right. But notice the gap here has got ever so slightly wider. So this area here, this specular highlight, is nowhere near clipping. The next thing we're going to do is switch out to process version 2 or PB2010 and we will just simply go and reset the settings just as we did in the video yesterday. And now the image has gone quite flat. We'll go to lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration, we'll go to detail. We'll double click colour to put the colour noise reduction back. I might as well go and Add, a bit, add the sharpen, default sharpening back and now you can start to see we're, we're actually beginning to build up more detail in that eye but what I actually have forgotten to do haven't I? I need to switch this back to version 4 and now you can see we've got that lovely in, subtle inverted S shaped tone curve now if we were clever enough and smart enough we could actually have modified the tone curve in the original image to emulate this. But just imagine how, how long that would take to get it absolutely perfect. All I'm going to do now is just double click on the exposure to bring the exposure back up. Double click on the contrast, yes, to put the contrast back where it was. Notice I've still got a nice gap, so this specular highlight will catch light in the eye is nowhere near clipping and I've now got a little tiny gap at the end of my darkish tones so I'm nowhere near clipping in my shadows either. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those blacks at plus 25 and then we're going to add some clarity. That's way too much. Just add a little bit of clarity and then I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance and maybe a little bit of saturation. Okay, so there's our roughly processed picture of Aries. And if we actually come back to reset, we are now way different. We're in another, a completely different position to actually begin to process this image and make localized adjustments. Whether we want to make those localized adjustments totally in Lightroom, or if we want to make them in Photoshop, it's entirely up to you or me which way we want to do it. But in order to be, get a good starting point for our localized adjustments, we need to get the global adjustments sorted out first. And the big thing about Lightroom is it puts this excessive contrast adjustment into your image on a global scale. 
yeah nothing about images or image processing is global the final image always relies on localized adjustments so we need to get our image into the best place possible to begin those localized adjustments let's go and do some localized adjustments in Lightroom I will come to the effects panel and I will add a little vignette yeah I might even go and crop the image ever so slightly and just bring it into maybe about there and we'll go ahead and click done on that and I might actually now go and even put a little tiny bit of extra contrast into the image sounds strange yeah I might even come and take a little bit of exposure out of it and now I think he's looking really nice the image looks really sexy but then I'll go and get a radial filter and we'll reset the values for the radial filter and I'll just go and put that radial filter over his eye I'll make it quite big and what will we do we'll take this up to a one-to-one -one view so we can see what we're doing we'll hold the space cut space bar key down to drag it and I think I might just go and add a little bit of exposure to his eye I might take out a little bit of contrast add a little bit of clarity lift the shadows in his eye just ever so slightly and then maybe just a couple of points of noise reduction just on that radial filter there and if we turn that radial filter off and then turn it back on again there's a very coarse localized adjustment which is beneficial to this image done inside the Lightroom as we all know we can do some wonderful localized adjustments inside of Photoshop but right at this minute I don't really think that this quick tutorial warrants taking this image into Photoshop I think the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of saturation which might just emphasize the actual pink color of his the edge of his eyelids and uh, there we go so I hope that's been useful to you I hope now that you understand the difference between contrast and clarity contrast squeezes black and white together at the expense of our midtones it crushes our midtones therefore it crushes our midtone detail clarity on the other hand actually improves the intertonal detail or intertonal contrast of our midtones up to a point be careful when you use clarity do not use too much anyway there you go hope that's been useful for you if it has go click the subscribe button or give me a like and uh, i shall see you in the next lesson or i keep saying i'll see you but i, I, I never will well i tell you what one of these days i'll actually tidy my office so because i don't want anybody to see it at the minute because it looks like a junk pile and uh, but i will put the webcam on so you can say hello to me and i can say hello to you and you can see me and then i'll get loads of messages saying andy take the bloody webcam off you ugly sod <laughs> anyway okay i'll see you inside the next lesson toot